Welcome to The Architect. My name is Edward Mogo and you're watching The Architect. On this very cold morning, uh, we want us to explore a couple of issues. The first one being, now you've decided to build um, either a corporate or an individual and uh, the various ways of going around it. We want to explore how do you build, uh, what are the modalities that are available to you for starting your construction. Keep watching The Architect. I hope you've subscribed to our contact us here below. Keep watching us as we talk about the modalities of carrying out a building project. Good. Like we said, we have uh, various ways of building, the modalities of building. The first one, obviously, is uh, doing it yourself what you call uh, going with Fundi Direct. Fundi, you get fundis, you agree um, uh, this is their price per day, and uh, you are going to pay them uh, uh, for various trades, the electrician, the, the mason, and every Saturday you go with a bunch of money and pay off for the work they've done. Now, the pros, if you can call them pros, are that one probably is the most cost effective. The but you need to factor that in. And uh, on top of being cost effective, you also get to choose your materials. So you, you can say you have a control on the material supply. Now, the, the negative is that um, you as a, a lay person are in charge of materials which you are not quite an expert of. So you may be choosing materials which in your opinion are good, but in reality, they're not the best for whatever uh, project you're carrying out. And this goes whether you're sourcing materials locally or going to China or Malaysia or Dubai to look for the materials. Because that material may look very good in the shop, but probably it's not uh, convenient or it's not desirable to use in your type of project. Now, one of the negatives, again, one of the, the negatives for that kind of work is that you become a contractor yourself. And don't forget, for you to get even the, 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 the money to do a building project, be it a corporate or an, or an, in, or an individual, there's something you are doing that earned you that money. What you have done now is you've converted yourself from whatever it is you are doing, uh, uh, a doctor, an engineer, or uh, a banker, into a contractor. Now, because you're not there full time, the chances of that fundi or those fundis making um, uh, a mistake which you are not able to, to capture in good time is very high. I'm assuming in all these that you may have a competent team of professionals working for you. So we expect that uh, in the course of, say, the month, you'll have your site meeting where your architect and your engineer will come and look at what has been done. The unfortunate thing is that because of the amorphous nature of how you've hired your fundies, is that by the time they're coming up to two weeks, a lot of bad things would have happened. And it's going to cost you quite a bit to rectify that. Mistakes in buildings are very, very expensive. Every time you need to, to rub out a line, it's not like rubbing out a line in the drawing, it is knocking down a wall. That becomes very expensive. One of, again, the negatives is that those fundies, you've employed them on a time-based model. You're telling them per day, I'm going to pay you so much money. It is possible then their goals and your goals are not aligned. You want a house or your project building quick uh, to finish in the shortest possible time. Then they want their project to take as long as possible because you're paying them per day. So therefore, that misalignment of goals will make sure your project delays are almost guaranteed. So that is number one, which is fully direct. Number two is a contract of labor where you say, I have my team ready, but I don't want to hassle the fundies. I'll get a contractor who will come with his labor. Labor meaning uh, the masons, the, the carpenters, the joiners, the whatever it is. Uh, all the fund is required. He'll come with them and he'll pay them. Now, for profit, of course, because he'll make sure that they are doing good work. And once they do good work, which is certified by the professionals or by himself, then he pays them at the end of the week. On your part, you being the, the client, you would then pay him, agree on a, either a time payment where you tell him every month, if he's doing a block of flats for you, say he's doing 20 flats, 
you will agree that every month for the next one and a half years, you pay him a constant amount of money. You pay him, say, a million shillings every month for 18 months. Could be an option. It could also be you pay him per stage. You agree that from foundation to ground floor, I'll pay you so much money. From fast, from uh, from ground floor to every slab thereafter, I'm going to be paying you a certain amount of money. For interior fit outs, for doing the doors, the windows, a certain amount of money per face. That is a better way. Uh, one, it it controls the kind of timing you're going to go to. Because don't forget that you've already agreed on a lump sum for the with the contractor. So meaning, no matter how long it takes, that lump sum will not go up. So it's, it's in his interest for him to do a very quick job and a good job. Because I'm assuming that your team of professionals who you've hired are putting him in check by coming for site visits and inspections to make sure that he does a good job. So therefore, he's not there to delay the project unduly. So you are at least in that regard, your, 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 your target is aligned. So that is an advantage that you're working together to make sure that the project gets completed in the shortest possible time. The negative, the key negative of this project is, the, of this kind of building modality is, if there's a mistake made by either the contractor or the subcontractor, the fault, the, 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 the loss is directly to you. Because if there's a mistake, say, in the way the wall was aligned or the way the workmanship has been, been done, because you are the source of the materials, that material loss is yours. Unless you've contracted out with him that any, def any defects attributable to him or his parties, then he will pay for them. So you need to be very careful in drafting a contract for labor, simply because who handles defects when they arise? Who handles the overruns of time when they arise? So it should be very key, you should be very keen in drawing that contract to find out who will handle what issues when they come up. We still have two other modalities to look at and we'll give them up in the next show. Don't forget to subscribe to this show um, uh, shoot us a mail on on mail, of, or post us something on, uh, on 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 our page or on Facebook. We'll be happy to to address any queries you may have. Uh, but meanwhile, keep watching the architect. My name is Edward Mogo, and God bless you all.